Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey. Hi. Oh. Hey guys, what's up? It's Amanda. So today I'm gonna talk to you about the things that I wish I knew when I was in high school that would make my life so much easier when I was in college because that's what I'm trying to do here is make your lives easier and have a smooth transition so that you know more about this crazy world of medicine, of healthcare, all of that. My biggest advice for anyone who wants to be pre-med, STEM, anything like that is to actually take your high school science classes seriously because in college they're going to hand you a textbook and they're going to tell you that the homework is optional or it's recommended. You will have some homework in labs that are mandatory but there will be some recommended problems or recommended reading. And by recommended, they mean required because more often than not, that's the stuff that's gonna show up on the exam. The best way to make sure that you get the most bang for your buck in college is to actually take what you're learning in high school pretty seriously. So basically just take your science and math classes extremely seriously and try to learn as much as possible from them. If your school does offer AP, take AP Chem, take AP Bio. You don't have to sit for the exam if you don't feel like it but I would recommend it it's gonna show you what college level exams and like the pressure is kind of like however just like a disclaimer about AP classes if you are going to be taking AP classes and you want to go to med school you have to realize if you're taking AP bio and AP chem a lot of med schools do not actually count them as prerequisites so if you're trying to transfer in your bio and chem from high school to get rid of it in college it's not gonna work when you go to apply for med school you're still gonna have to take those classes in college so that's just a little heads up in addition, like when I was in high school, when I was taking biology, we didn't have any AP classes offered at my high school. I think we had one, but like no one even took the AP exam. So we didn't exactly have that luxury of having an elevated teaching system um, like AP classes have, where they put you kind of on a college timeline and then you take a big exam. And it's essentially the same the same thing that you would be learning in college. If your school does not offer APs, I would say focus on your foundations even more. Khan Academy is a great resource. Your textbooks in school is a great resource. The internet has everything pretty much on it. Get a Chegg account. You have access to hundreds of online textbooks and their answer keys. Just all of those things in high school are really gonna help. So build a strong, strong foundation. Take your biology, take your chemistry extremely seriously. The first probably month of college is like going over AP chemistry. And you, if your AP chemistry teacher is extremely well-versed, she or he or they, whatever their pronoun is, may go way past what your college professors will do, which will only just make you a stronger student. Get your foundation strong so that when you go to college, you're not starting from scratch because I started from scratch in chemistry and it was the worst thing ever. And then when you're taking the exams in college, you won't have to study nearly as hard as you would have if you're starting from scratch. In addition, it'll just like help you get better grades. And I cannot stress to you how crucial your first couple years in college are for your GPA. So the more you solidify your foundations in high school, the better you're gonna do in college. That's my tip number one is Build a strong, strong foundation in STEM, um, no matter what field you're going into. As for dual enrollment, I don't know if it's nationwide or not, but a lot of states have this thing called dual enrollment where you can go to a local community college or whatever your local college is and you can take a class for, I think it's like 100 or $200 as opposed to the normal like three thousand dollars it would be to take a college class so that's a huge thing if you are like gung-ho pre-med pre-vet pre-dental whatever i would say use those dual enrollment credits for your easier elective classes so that when you are in your first semester you can just take your core classes and you can focus on them so for example take like an english class all freshmen are required to take english take like a calculus class all freshmen who are in stem usually are required to take some form of math take like a statistics class take a sociology class any of those types of classes that are pretty generic for a freshman in college to be required that you know you can easily transfer in i would recommend taking because then you knock that off your list when you get into college and then if say you're a freshman and you're a pre-med you're gonna be taking biochem calc english potentially physics or some other class that you'd have to take so by getting rid of that english or by getting rid of that math class you automatically free up some of your schedule to really just focus on getting the best grades possible in school um some schools might offer both see what your school offers 
see how many credits you can get on top of that see if there's any vocational schools around you um like like i went to the health sciences academy and i was able to get 17 college credits for 300 dollars because they only charged 100 dollars each when i was in school and now it's 200 yeah see what you can get for your money and then it's only gonna put you with an upper leg when you go into college the next thing in high school you are trying to make sure that you get into a good college right so in order to make sure that you get into a college that is going to suit you well for your sciences and give you a strong and even stronger foundation than you already have you want to make sure that you get into a school that is going to have a strong science research and stem facility so look into these schools see what they're rated in stem see what they offer for research do they let undergrads do research if so those are the types of schools that you look for in addition when you're in high school the only way you're going to get into these really prestigious colleges is if you take high school seriously. So you're going to need to study for your SAT, study for your ACT. Granted, not all colleges require them, but make sure that the school that you are going to go to is strong. That way you have the strongest foundation. In order to get into a good college, you really want to make sure that you're starting to become a well-rounded person. The goal in terms of being a physician is to see, are you a well-rounded person? Because in my opinion, I want my doctor to be someone that I can talk to and someone that I know is well-rounded. I don't want my doctor to be a little bored who can't hold a conversation but has hundreds on all of their tests. You know, the person can be the smartest person in the world, but if they can't convey it to you, then what's the point? So the more that you can become a well-rounded person in high school, the better. So start getting yourself a little bit uncomfortable, start going out into the community and dabbling in community service. I think National Honor Society, it's been a long time, it's been literally like eight years since high school, but I think National Honor Society requires you to do community service, but see if there's any other community service that you can do. More often than not, there is, you just have to find it. So whether that be like food shelters, clothing drives, homeless shelters, local camps. Like if you're an athlete, a lot of times you can volunteer at camps as like a student coach. So anything that you can get involved in is a pretty big deal and will only give you a leg up. Another thing is that when you start to develop the habits of volunteering, you're gonna realize how much good one person can do in the community. And hopefully that'll just, again, fuel a ripple effect to when you're in college. And when you're in college, you do not want to stop volunteering. Volunteering is huge. Community service is huge in an application for med school, for dental school, wherever you want to go. In addition, you can potentially start doing science fairs. You can get dabbling in research. There are a lot of high schools that do connect to colleges and there are summer programs that are designated for research. So get involved in research and see if it's something that you like. See if it's something that is for you. See if it's something that's not for you. Because if it's not for you, at least you know. In addition, in high school, you need to start developing healthy habits. And what I mean by that is exercise. So if you don't play a sport in high school and you're one of those people that goes to school, comes home, opens a bag of chips, watches TV, does their homework, maybe hangs out with friends, goes to bed. That's fine, but at the same time, you have to realize college is going to be a lot harder and it is scientifically proven that exercise does help release endorphins and these endorphins in turn make us feel better both about ourselves and about the world that we live in so the more that you can start incorporating exercise into your daily life the better you will be in college because freshman 15 is real in college because you go from being a high school athlete to a college couch potato and only focusing on your school and forgetting about that you were exercising you're required to exercise like an hour an hour and a half every day in school whether it be from PE or some kind of sports team you were required to exercise at a minimum in high school and they try to help you develop those habits but it's our job to continue them into college those are a couple big things i would say is like just try to develop some healthy habits in terms of eating in terms of exercising those are going to be huge because i promise you when you get to college you think you're going to be prepared but you're not no one is ever truly prepared for college even someone who took 17 college credits before she started college i was not prepared whatsoever i definitely like had a couple meltdowns the first three weeks of school call my mom it's like what what the heck did i do to myself essentially but everyone goes through it it's not just you also in high school i would say start shadowing 
a lot of times it's pretty hard to shadow before the age of 18 so my biggest recommendation for shadowing if you don't have access to a program like i did that sets it all up is using your connections abuse and use your connections if you know someone who is a nurse if you know someone who is a doctor if you know someone who is a dentist a veterinarian whatever that you're even remotely interested in you may be like i don't think i want to be a veterinarian but i'm still kind of interested in what they do ask susie's mom who's a veterinarian if you can shadow her and more often than not if you have a personal connection with that person they will let you shadow so developing your skills to ask someone to shadow is in and of itself a feat but also shadowing is a feat the earlier you start shadowing the better you have an idea of what you want to do and it's just going to make you a stronger applicant all around because you'll be able to understand what's going on around you you'll be able to truly relate to the patients that are going through something more and more the more and more you shadow the more you immerse yourself into the fields that you're interested in the more you'll have a sense as to whether or not you truly want to pursue it and therefore you'll be saving money and or getting a better perspective on what you want to do with your life oh high school clubs get involved in clubs there's usually a bio club a chem club depending on how big or small your high school is there is usually different clubs in high school student government whatever get involved in some of those clubs because those are going to start teaching you some time management skills they're going to start teaching you some communication skills in addition they're just going to aid your college application and make you a more well-rounded applicant anything that you think is remotely interesting join it and try it out worst case scenario you don't like it and you move on all that you lost was essentially knowledge that you don't like something and if you know that you don't like it and you've actually tried it you can say okay goodbye also in high school you most people will turn 18 years old their senior year of high school if you know that you're turning 18 years old in your senior year of high school and you think that you want to go to pa school or you think that you want to go to med school you can get a job as a pharmacy tech as an LNA, as an EMT, any of those things and that's just a certification class away that allow you to have direct patient care and patient care hours are huge if you want to be a PA because if you want to be a PA they require at least a thousand patient contact hours and a thousand hours is a lot so if you can get your certification early like the summer after senior year and you work during summer senior year you work every summer and maybe potentially school breaks those thousand hours will go by so quick you won't even have to worry about cramming for applying they'll just be a little checkbox all done however if you do wait and you don't get your certification until you're like a junior in college it's going to be a lot harder for you to get the hours that you need to apply in addition if you do get the hours that you need it makes you a stronger applicant for whatever you choose to go into so whether that be medical school dental school any professional school that you're thinking about out, those patient hours are going to be invaluable to your application and they're going to set you aside from a whole pool of applicants because you have the literal skills and by literal skills I mean like tangible like you've touched the patients you have dealt with them in their times of need in their times of grief in their times of fear you have seen it all maybe not at all but you've seen a lot more than most people have so if you're seriously considering going to medicine in high school get some certification whether it be EMT whether it be your LNA CNA your pharmacy technician license anything that you can be 18 or older and get get it get your hands on it touch it feel it go out in the field and see what it's like because field work is going to be the biggest thing that is going to help set you aside as an applicant like I said the more you do the more you are